This one's going to be a little different. Have you ever come across a truly impactful artwork, composition, or piece of architecture and wondered why it was so visually enchanting? The probable answer lies in the artist's use of the golden ratio, also known as the divine proportion and a part of the Fibonacci number series. You've probably already seen the golden ratio at work, but did you know that you've likely heard it? Brilliant minds from Leonardo da Vinci to Mozart, Beethoven to Debussy have harnessed the power of the divine proportion. But what is it? Where and how is it used in music? The divine proportion is based on a ratio between one object and another. As a decimal, it is the infinite irrational number 1.618033. We know it simply as phi, and we can begin to visualize this using a golden rectangle. A rectangle is said to be a golden rectangle if, when dividing its length by its height, the answer is phi. This leads us to the Fibonacci sequence. Think of it like nature's code. It appears everywhere, and we'll see how in just a moment. But what exactly is the Fibonacci sequence? Well, it's a series of numbers. Zero, one, one, two. Each new number in the five, sequence eight. is found by adding the two numbers that came just before it. The higher we go in the sequence, dividing each number by the last, the closer we get to phi. The sequence can be used to draw and add squares to form rectangles. We can create what's known as the Fibonacci spiral by drawing circular arcs connecting the opposite corners of the squares drawn using the sequence. The Fibonacci spiral can be seen in everything from the arrangement of leaves on a stem to extraordinary works of art and even spiral galaxies. A fantastic visualization of the sequence can be seen using the piano keyboard. Take an octave on the piano, which goes from one note to its higher version. Inside this octave, there are 13 distinct notes, eight white keys and five black. A musical scale is like a group of eight chosen notes from this octave. These notes are the building blocks of melodies. In this scale, pay attention to the fifth and third notes. These two notes form the foundation for making chords, which are combinations of notes that sound well together. The dominant or fifth note of the major scale is also the eighth chromatic note in the octave. Here's where it gets even more interesting. When you divide eight by 13, you approximate phi. Mozart frequently drew inspiration from the golden ratio, especially in his piano sonatas. A standard sonata is divided into three main sections, an exposition where the main theme is introduced, and then a development and recapitulation. And these are where the theme is developed and then repeated. Now here's the intriguing part. Mozart structured his piano sonatas so that if you divided the number of bars in the development and recapitulation by the number of bars in the exposition, the result would be approximately 1.618, the golden ratio. Take, for example, the first movement of Mozart's piano sonata number one in C major. The exposition is 38 bars long, while the development and recapitulation combined are 62 bars, giving us 100 bars in total. Dividing the total number of bars by the golden ratio phi gives us the exact proportions Mozart used. The same proportions can be seen in Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, in Debussy's Refle Don Lo, and a fantastic example of the Fibonacci number sequence in the opening xylophone solo in the third movement of Bartok's Music for Strings, Percussion, and Celesta, in which it goes up and down the beginning of the sequence. What's not certain, however, is if the use of the divine proportion was actually as intentional as, say, in the artworks of Da Vinci and Dali. Perhaps more peculiar would be if it wasn't. I'll leave you on the thought that if you look carefully enough, you may just begin to see the divine proportion golden ratio or Fibonacci's spiral everywhere.